This time on the show, can an SSH proxy become a VPN? We're bridging networks with a wicked Python script. It's what happens when a transparent proxy gets together with a VPN and SSH. That's like a networking threesome, plus secure chat in Linux. All that and more, this time on Hack5. This segment is brought to you by Untangle. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. <laughs> it's your weekly dose of Technolus. What's it all is. that about? I had a cold last week, so I wasn't on the show. Hmm. But I'm still sniffly. You can probably hear it in my voice. Yeah, I get the CES glow too. Yeah. That's going around, man. I know. Please I gotta eat lots of oranges. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in the kernel. Run antivirus. <laughs> because that will work. <laughs> kernel. <laughs> oh, gosh. If only, if only you got the reference. I can't find my kernel. <laughs> panic. <laughs> Quick, panic. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we are back in studio. It feels yes. like it's been forever since we've been I in know. studio. I know. Well, it's been like two, three weeks, I think. Something yes. like that. And um, I, I guess I'm not going to get too much into the ongoings of last week other than to say thank you for all of the emails, everybody, and uh, continue to feel free to, to email me and just good stuff. So, um, Yeah, great job talking, on last week's just, episode. That's eh, awesome. Not really, but, th but well, thanks. Thank you. It was Appreciate good that it. somebody said something. Well, it's not even good just that. I just feel like it's one of those things that you can't just pretend doesn't happen. Yeah, because exactly. Because that doesn't make it not exist. Because things like that do happen, so. Yeah. Good you on you. You can't go la, 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 la. I, trust <laughs> me. Trust me, I've been there. Yeah. It doesn't work. All right, anyway. So, getting into the tech this week, yes. though. Yes. Um, I am kind of starting, okay, so you know how we did that series on SSH Foo, and we kind of, like, went exhaustively, <laughs> like, to yeah. the point where, like, viewers were not... Not the whiteboard falling asleep stuff? viewers, but you know, it was quite You're a bit. You're talking about the whiteboard, uh -huh, right? The whiteboard yeah. with oh, the yeah. SSH. Well, that was I, pretty crazy. I'm starting a new series here, and what I want to uh, try to tackle with this is I kind of almost got a little daunted with the the coming VPN series, the GPG series, mm -hmm. the, all of these different technologies, which in their own right we could really spend a season on each of those. However, in the uh, interest of keeping things moving, keeping things fresh, yeah. um, what I want to do is start a uh, series on the ultimate like personal computer security road warrior. This is what you need to do if you're in a hostile environment, oh. if you're traveling, if you're just a sane hacker that wants to make sure that they're following these kinds of best practices. Right. So rather than go into like an exhaustive GPG series or an exhaustive VPN series, I kind of just want to talk about like, look, if you're about to, you know, hit the road and go some places where you might have your things looked at, here are some ways in which you could, um, you know, all uh, kind of just mix it up and keep it moving. Okay, so cool. In the spirit of that, uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is not SSH tunneling. Oh, really? And it's not VPNs either. <laughs> what is it? It's a little bit of both. <laughs> oh. It's like <laughs> that's dirty. There's this really cool program called S Shuttle that is kind of like the marriage That's how you say of it. these. And, uh, <laughs> or I guess SSH, SSH Uttle. I'm gonna call it S Shuttle. Yeah, or S, sh S Shuttle. Sh 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 shuttle. 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 <laughs> this episode is brought to you by sh 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 Shuttle. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna be using this to create a transparent proxy cool. so that all of the applications on our Linux machine are going to go through this. It's very much like a VPN, but it's building on the same concepts. And this is kind of brilliant here in that it is, this is the segue segment because it's taking us from the concept of SSH, which we have exhaustively gotten into, yeah. and bringing us into the concepts of VPNs. Cool. So this is like one I'm of those. I'm looking forward to checking this out. Yeah, this is one of those fun hacky ones. And then you're getting into like secure, secure I am, talking, right? I'm actually right? using a little bit of open SSH foo to have us talk to each other on the same local host. It's going to be good times. I love this. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to get into my sh 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 shuttling. Sweet. And I guess I will talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Or Bye. you can you can write me. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, where was I? Uh, so S shuttle or sh shuttle. It builds itself as quote where transparent proxy meets VPN meets SSH. And it's not exactly a VPN, nor is it port forwarding. It's like a VPN in that it forwards every port on the network. And so not just the ports that you specify with like SSH tunnels. I know that we exhaustively got into TACD and all of the different letters for all the different forwarding techniques. Well, this is nice because you don't have to remember which port is mapped to which service. If I did like 
8080 and that goes to this IRC server over here and 8081 goes to that thing over there. It's nothing like that, which I really like. That said, it's sort of like port forwarding because it's a stateful connection, whereas a VPN traditionally forwards your packet one packet at a time. And so to explain that, the S-Shuttle author kind of says that it's similar to an old program by the name of Slurp, which was a user space TCP IP implementation that operated on a packet by packet basis. And it would encapsulate the packets it sent uh, in uh, to the server uh, on the other side one at a time. Now, the problem with that is that TCP inherently needs packet loss. I know it's kind of a weird thing to think, but yes, your connection requires packet loss to function properly. It's how TCP knows when to slow down. When each individual TCP packet is encapsulated in a second TCP packet, well then the only the outside layer will know to adjust for packet loss and anything inside is just going to get you know, the connection errors are going to be unbeknownst to the first packet. So what S-Shuttle does is it does a stateful assembly into you know, packets into a logical TCP stream on your computer before sending them over to the remote host, the server on the other side, over an SSH connection. Uh, and for those that are into useless trivia, there is plenty of awesome tech lore on the project's GitHub page. Well, suffice it to say, though, if you're running Linux, FreeBSD, or a Mac, uh, then you, you know, and you have SSH access on a remote machine in the cloud, you know, whether or not you have admin access on it, and, uh, you know, you want to make an easy VPN-like tunnel without getting into all the port forwarding foo we've extensively gotten into, S-Shuttle is probably for you. So, to get started, all you need are, one, root privileges on your client machine. You're also going to need Python and IP tables, which are installed by default on most distributions. So I'm using Ubuntu here, and it's, I don't have to think about it. Now, the server side, on the other hand, you don't need any of these. It doesn't need um, root. You don't need uh, IP tables. It does need Python, but really any plain Jane VPS is going to do. So to get started, all we really have to do is clone the GitHub. So in order to do that, I'm going to uh, git clone, and then the it's git colon slash slash github dot com slash apenwar slash shuttle, s shuttle. And it's cloning the object. If I ls, I see there it is. Come into here, and there's a bunch of goody files. And it's all set up and, and easy to do. And so really, from here, all I would really have to do is evoke sudo dot slash ssh. Now, remember, you do have to be root as the client to do this. So sudo dot slash ssh, or s shuttle. And I'm going to get all of the information that I need on how to actually use this. So there's a couple of options that I like to do. So first of all, I'm going to add here. Let me clear this. And come down here and show you. Uh, I like to use TAC -TAC DNS. Uh, that's important because it keeps my DNS queries from leaking out. And you know that's kind of an issue also with other proxying technologies like Tor. You really want to make sure whenever you're finding out you know, what the IP address of the domain name is, you're doing that through this tunnel that you're trying to use to keep yourself secure. Otherwise, you're kind of screaming out to the world, here's what I'm looking at. Even though you don't see it, here's where I'm, you know, what I'm interested in. Okay, the other ones that I use are TAC TAC, or I'm sorry, TAC VVR. So V, V for very verbose, and R is for remote. And this is where you would do user at host. Now, in this case, and I must stress, do not do this. I'm a trained professional, <laughs> and I, I'm literally using like a test server here. Um, I haven't gotten everything set up the way that I need it to be, so do not do this. However, for the purposes of illustration, I am using root at a spare host that will probably be gone by the time you see this. That said, oops, 173, 214, 161, 55. Okay, you don't want to normally SSH as root. I'm totally doing this, even though I said last season not to. All right. Uh, and then the last thing you want to en enter in here is 0 slash 0, uh, or at least in this case. And that is a shortcut for 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, .0, 0, or 
all connections. Now, if you want to, you know, you only have some traffic go through this SSH tunnel VPN thingy, you could actually provide CIDR notation right here. That's it. It's, you know, um, it's as easy as that. But by doing 0 slash 0, I'm telling my computer, if I'm trying to hit anything on the IP4 internet, go through this tunnel. So let me go ahead and run this. And you can see it's binding locally. And you can actually see it executing the SSH over to root at this IP. And I'm prompted for the password on the remote host. And there we go. It's running. And the very verbose part means that I'm going to see all of this jazz. Well, if I come over here to Firefox and open a new window and go to our favorite IP chicken, you're going to see that, well, one, a lot of stuff is happening in the window over here because I'm actually making this connection um, right here. But you'll also notice that the IP address that I'm given is the same as what I typed in for my SSH. It's the 173.214.161.55. Um, if I were to close this connection by just doing a control C, you're going to see right here, it's just using IP tables, it's changing my routing. And if I were to refresh this, and Paul will do a good job of blurring out the studio IP, but you're going to see it ends in 129, just like it does down here as well. You can see we're on Comcast, but uh, yeah, there you go. It's, it's the old you know refresh um, IP checking to show that I'm tunneling all of my traffic, which is really cool, you know, because I didn't have to set up any special in settings in my browser. I didn't have to, you know, run some special instance of like SSH TAC capital D. Um, and this is really cool. You don't need to install SSH on the remote server either. You saw that I didn't even log into my remote. Well, I guess I did when I SSH it over to it. But, you know, the beautiful thing is S shuttle invokes itself remotely on the server for you. And get this, you can get as advanced as you like with it since it's using IP tables on the back end. For example, you can exclude certain TCP traffic using TAC X option. And that, that is to say, like, you know, if you had, a, a, you know, I could say my LAN here, I could say, uh, what is it? We're on a um, 10.73. So anything beginning, I could do 10.73.31.0 slash 24. And then anything bound for my local network won't go through the S shuttle. Smart, right? Uh, the other thing that you could do is you could tunnel only certain IP traffic whatsoever. So if you wanted to, you could do um, you know, S shuttle, tag VR, and then the server, and then just enter in the site or net address of what you want to actually connect to. And, it, and you, you could also have it do kind of all of this automatically for you, kind of like a VPN back to the office by using a couple of flags here. There's um, tag uh, N, which is a flag which will tell S shuttle to figure out the IP address and the subnets to forward all on its own. So you can say, hey, look, I just want to get access to this network. Here's attack N. And then I love this. Anybody that's done like PPTP over Windows and things of that nature will remember uh, TAC H. This is a, just such a cool one. This flag scans the remote for host names within the remote subnet, and then it will store them temporarily in your slash Etsy slash host file. So you don't even have to think about it. If you're used to going to, you know, backslash, backslash, this computer name, it'll just show up. How wonderful is that? All right, well, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys think about S Shuttle uh, and what are the kind of fun hacks you do with SSH as we kind of meander our way through all the fun ways that you can keep your packets hidden. Or not hidden, but encapsulated properly, but not one at a time, because TCP over TCP is bad. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, Shannon is going to talk with Talk D. Are you thinking about replacing your outdated firewall, your gateway, your MTU? Well, if you're wondering how Untangled stacks up, you might be really surprised. I love Untangled, and it is the most complete solution out there right out of the box. You can skip the multiple appliances, the hidden costs, the add-ons. 
most of all the annoying sales reps. Whether you're looking for a hardware, software, or get this, I love this, a virtualized solution, oh yeah, Untangled gets the job done for so much less cash. And if you want to, you can run Untangled on your network for free with no commitment whatsoever. All you have to do is install it on commodity PC hardware. We've done just that here on Hack5 previously. And if you need like the minimum protection, run the light package. It's open source. It's always free of charge. Or if you're like me and you want the full featured solution, I love this. They've got advanced web filtering technologies. They've got application control, policy management, bandwidth control, that's kind of huge. You're gonna want the premium package, which includes every single app Untangled makes. So Hack5 viewers, you get this, you get something really special because uh, Untangled loves us. They wanna hook you up with 14 day free trial of their entire Untangled premium package of apps and you can save 20% off the list price. All you have to do is use the promo code HACK5 and they've set up a certain site just for you guys. So please do this, head over to untangle.com slash HAK5.